Um, before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who will well teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect, and shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazakah from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And pretty much we're going to uh, do a quick hit on this Daniel 7. Now, I'm not going to break down this whole entire chapter, but I'm just going to break down probably five five precepts and then i'll do another part tomorrow lord willing however the spirit put on me but uh just to get at least something in you know get a lesson in we got to continue to do the labors so uh lord willing is that that a fine this is uh daniel 7 and 1 it says in 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 the first year of balsazar king of babylon balsazar was the last king to rule in babylon he was the last king to rule in babylon and we're going to prove that going to daniel 5 and reading verse 28 this is daniel 5 and verse 28 it says then commanded balsazar and they clothed daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom verse 30 and that night was balsazar the king of the chaldean slain he was killed by darius the mede verse 31 and darius the median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old. So King Balsazar was the last king to rule in Babylon. He was the last king to rule in Babylon. Read it from the top, Daniel 7 and 1. In the first year of Balsazar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. So he had pretty much he had a dream, a vision. It says, then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Just like what brothers do when they have visions. You have brothers in this truth. They'll have visions of certain things that they seen. And, you know, they'll do a testimony, do a lesson of a testimony of their vision that they saw. It may be an end day prophecy. It may be many different things that brothers have. Brothers have visions in this truth. That's pretty much what Daniel was doing when you read. And he told the sum of the matter. So that's pretty much what it's going into. Verse 2, it says, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And that great sea is talking about the Mediterranean Sea. As you can see, the Mediterranean Sea, you have Egypt, you have Libya, so-called Africa, right? Which, that's all Africa right here. Libya, this is all Africa. Egypt, you see Israel right here. Right. You see Turkey, Syria. This is the Mediterranean Sea to give, you know, people out there. They don't know what the Mediterranean Sea is. This is the Mediterranean Sea. Yeah. And all that L Libya, Egypt, that's all so-called Africa. Right. They call Africa. Getting back to the main point. Uh, this is Daniel seven and two. It says Daniel Spank and said, I saw in my vision by night. And behold, four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, which is the Mediterranean Sea. That's what that's talking about. Verse 3, and four great beasts came upon the sea. This, it says diverse one from another. The four beasts is a representation of the four major empires. That's what the four beasts is talking about here. The four beasts is a representation of the four major empires. The Babylonian Empire. The, Med uh, the Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. Those are the four major empires. That's what it's talking about right here. The four beasts is the four major empires. And we can prove that going down to the 17th verse. This is Daniel 7 and 17. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. So, those again, those four beasts is a representation of the four major empires. The, the Babylonian Empire, the Medio Persian Empire, the Greek Empire, and the Roman Empire. Verse 4, it says the first, it says the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. This is the first beast. This is talking about the Assyrian Empire. To validate that, this is the Assyrian Empire. If you look at the Assyrian art, you see that? It says stood like a lion and had eagle's wings. This is the Assyrian Empire. For those of you that don't know, 
And that's what this is talking about. That first beast is talking about the Assyrian Empire. Read again, Daniel 7 and 4. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. This is the Assyrian, this is the Assyrian Empire. It says, I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and the wings thereof was plucked. This is talking about the Babylonian, uh, the Babylonian Empire took over. Pretty much took over the Assyrian Empire, going into Nebuchadnezzar. Right? The wings were plucked because it was the rise of the Babylonians. Right, it says, and it was lifted up from the earth, talking about the Babylonian Empire, and made stood upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart, and a man's heart was given unto it. This is talking about Nebuchadnezzar. He was a great king. He was at the top at that time. So you had the the Babylonians. They took over the Persian Empire. They took over the Assyrian Empire. The Babylonians took over the Assyrian Empire. This is uh, Daniel 7 and 5. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. And this is going into uh, the medial Persian Empire. You had the Medes that came first, then the Persians. It says, and it raised up itself on one side, right? Because that goes into the ram having two horns. One was higher than the other. And the one that was higher than the other was the Persians. The Persians was mightier than the Medes. You had the Medes. And you had the Persians, which goes to Daniel 7 and uh, verse 8. But I'll go to that. Let me finish this. Daniel 7 and 4. It says, the uh, I read that already. Verse 5. It says, and behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. This is the medial Persian empire. And it was, it says, and it rise up itself on one side. Right. When you go to Daniel 7 and 8, it mentions the ram with two horns. One horn was higher than the other. The, the horn that was lower was the Medes. So you had the Medes that came first, and then you had the ones that were higher, which was the which was the Persians. The Persians were mightier. They were higher. They were greater, in other words. So you had the ram with the two horns. That's mentioned in the medial Persian Empire when you go to Daniel 7 and 8. So when it says, and it raised up itself on one side, it's talking about the, the Persians being mightier. So you had the Medes, and then you had the Persians, the medial Persian Empire. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And that the three ribs, that's meaning the locations of the areas that they conquered. They went westward, northward, and southward. In other words, that's what that's going into. The areas that they conquered. It says, and they said thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. And we're going to get to that to prove what I'm saying. This is Daniel 8 and 3. It says, then I lifted up mine eyes. And saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. See? This is talking about the medial Persian Empire. You had the Medes that came first, then the Persians. It says, and the two horns were high. See? But one was higher than the other. Talking about the Persians. The Persians were mightier than the Medes. You had the Persians, but you had the, you had the Medes, but the Persians were mightier. It says, and the two horns were high. But one was higher than the other. And the higher came up last. So you had the Medes that came. And then you had the Persians that came after. That's what that's talking about. And remember when I was reading in the scriptures. Where it says they had the three ribs. That were given in the teeth of it. And I'll read that part again. And then I'll read the rest of this. Going to the red next verse of Daniel 8 and 4. Daniel 7 and verse uh, 5. And it had three ribs in the mouth. It had three ribs. Of the, it says it had. It, it says, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it, right? This was going uh, westward, northward, and southward, right? That's what I was going into. Here it is right here. And I saw the ram push westward, northward, and southward. That's the three ribs, the areas that they conquered. It says, so that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great, right? Because they were great. They were mighty. You had the Persians. The Persians were pretty much mightier. They were mightier. They were, they had their might. They were mightier. And it says, and they said, thus unto it, arise and devour much flesh. So they were pretty mightier. You know, they, they were pretty mighty. You had the Medes. The Medes were, the Medes were good, were, were good, were 
mighty, but the Persians was mightier. In other words. So wait, um, little ones, that's is edifying. I want to give all honors and glories and praise to Yahweh Bashim Ashari Bashim Akakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who will well teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Ashari. Peace, blessings, salutations to the hopeful elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother, scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the servants of Yahweh Wai Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Uh, Lord willing, tomorrow I'll probably do a second part. But uh, verse 6 is pretty much going into that leopard, which is uh, Alexander the Great. And it's going into the four wings of the fowl, the four beasts. Had also four heads, which that's also going into the four major generals. But you got primarily five because when you go on Google, um, it has um, uh, it has Ptolemy, Cassandor, Seleucus, Ly uh, and Antagonus. Lysimachus isn't mentioned up there, but when you go down on Google and you look a little bit deeper, it goes into they're the most prominent generals. So the most prominent generals were Ptolemy, Cassandor, Seleucus. Lysimachus and Antagonus. All five of them were the prominent uh, generals. They were the main generals, pretty much. So that's what that's going into right there, what goes into that. But I'll break it down in the next lesson. But uh, that leopard is talking about Alexander the Great, which is that, which is that, which is that third beast, which is the Greek Empire. This is where you, when you go into uh, Daniel seven and six, that goes into the Greek Empire. That's where you have those Israelites that were cast out as Greek, because it goes into the Antiochus. You had the Antiochs. You had the Antiochus the first, the second, the third, the fourth Epiphanes. But the one that did the most, uh, 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 the most, um, how can I put it? The the most oppression upon the Israelites was uh, uh, was Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. The Israelites were Hellenized. They couldn't keep the Sabbaths, the laws. That's where all that comes to. We're going into the Greek Empire, right? You had Antiochus uh, uh, Epiphanes. Antiochus the fourth Epiphanes. So we'll wrap it up with that. Lord wellness that's was edifying. I want to give all honors and glories, praise to Yahweh Bashim Ashai Bashim Akakodash. And Lord wellness that's was edifying. Till next time I say, Shalom.